चैप्टर सेवन अंडरस्टैंडिंग मार्जिनलाइजेशन वट डज इट मीन टू बी सोशली मार्जिनलाइज टू बी मार्जिनलाइज इज टू बी फोर्स टू ऑक्यूपाई द साइड्स और फ्रेंजेस एंड दस नॉट बी एट द सेंटर ऑफ थिंग्स दिस इज समथिंग दैट सम ऑफ यू हैव प्रोबेबली एक्सपीरियंसड इन द क्लास रूम आर प्ले ग्राउंड इफ यू आर नॉट लाइक मोस्ट पीपल इन योर क्लास दैट इज इफ योर टेस्ट इन म्यूजिक और फिल्म इज डिफरेंट इफ योर एक्सेंट मार्क्स you out from others if you are less chatty than others in your class if you don't play the same sport that many of your classmates like if you dress differently the chances are that you will not be considered to be in by your peers so often you end up feeling that you are not with it as if what you say feel and think and how you act are not quite right or acceptable to others as in the classroom in the social environment to groups of people or communities may have the experience of being excluded their marginalization can be because they speak a different language follow different customs or belong to a different religious group from the majority community they may also feel marginalized because they are poor considered to be of low social status and viewed as being less human than others Sometimes marginalized groups are viewed with hostility and fear. This sense of difference and exclusion leads to communities not having access to resources and opportunities and in their inability to assert their rights. They experience a sense of disadvantage and powerlessness vis a vis more powerful and dominant sections of society who on land are wealthy. better educated and politically powerful thus marginalization is seldom experienced in one sphere economic social cultural and political factors work together to make certain groups in society feel marginalized in this chapter you will read about two communities that are considered to be socially marginalized in india today you just read about how dadu was forced to leave his village in odisha Dadu's story is similar to the lives of millions of adivasis in India. You will read more about the marginalization of this community in this chapter. Who are adivasis? Adivasis the term literally means original inhabitants or communities who lived and often continue to live in close association with forests. About 8% of India's population is Adivasis and many of India's most important mining and industrial centers are located in Adivasi areas Jamshedpur Raurkela Bokaro and Bhilai among others Adivasis are not a homogeneous population There are over 500 different Adivasi groups in India Adivasis are particularly numerous in states like Chhattisgarh Jharkhand Madhya Pradesh Odisha Gujarat Maharashtra Rajasthan Andhra Pradesh West Bengal and in north eastern states of Arunachal Pradesh Assam Manipur Meghalaya Mizoram Nagaland and Tripura A state like Odisha is home to more than 60 different tribal groups Adivasi societies are also most distinctive because there is often very little hierarchy among them this make them radically different from communities organized around principles of jati var caste or those that were ruled by kings adivasis practice a range of tribal religions that are different from islam hinduism and christianity these often involve the worship of ancestors village and nature spirit the last associated with the residing in various sites in the landscape mountain spirits river spirits animal spirits etc the village spirits are often worshiped at specific sacred groves within the village boundary while the ancestral ones are usually worshiped at home additionally adivasis have always been influenced by different surrounding religions like sakta buddhist vaishno bhakti and christianity simultaneously adivasi religion themselves have influenced dominant religions of the empires around them for example the jagannath cult of odisha and sakti and tantric traditions in west bengal and assam during the 19th century substantial numbers of adivasis converted to christianity which has emerged as a very important religion in modern adivasi history Adivasis have their own language most of them radically different from and possibly as old as Sanskrit which have often deeply influenced the formation of mainstream Indian languages like Bengali Santali has the largest number of speakers and has a significant body of publications 
including magazines on the internet or in e jeans adivasis and stereotyping in india we usually showcase adivasi communities in particular ways thus during school functions or other official events or in books and movies adivasis are invariably portrayed in very stereotypical way in colorful costumes headgears and through their dancing besides this we seem to know very little about the realities of their lives this often wrongly leads to people believing that they are exotic primitive and backward often adivasis are blamed for their lack of advancement as they are believed to be resistant to change or new ideas you will remember that you read in class 6 book how stereotyping particular communities can lead to people discriminating against such groups adivasis and development as you have already read in your history textbook forest were absolutely crucial to the development of all empires and settled civilizations in india metal ores like iron and copper and gold and silver coal and diamonds invaluable timber most medicinal herbs and animal products wax lac honey and animals themselves elephant the mainstay of imperial armies all came from the forest in addition the continuation of life depended heavily on forest that help recharge many of india's rivers and as is becoming clearer now crucial to the availability and quality of our air and water forests covered the major part of our country till the 19th century and the adivasis had a deep knowledge of access to as well as control over most of these vast tracts at least in the middle of the 19th century this meant that they were not ruled by large estates and empires instead of an empires heavily dependent on adivasis for the crucial access to forest resources this is radically contrary to our image of adivasis today as somewhat marginal and powerless communities in the pre colonial world they were traditionally ranged hunter gatherers and nomads and lived by shifting agriculture and also cultivating in one place although these remains for the past 200 years adivasis have been increasingly forced through economic changes forest policies and political force applied by the state and private industry to migrate to leaves as workers in plantations at construction sites in industries and as domestic workers for the first time in history they do not control or have much direct access to the forest territories forest lands have been cleared for timber and to get land for agriculture and industry adivasis have also lived in areas that are rich in mineral and other natural resources these are taken over for mining and other large industrial projects powerful forces have often colluded to take over tribal land much of the time the land is taken away forcefully and procedures are not followed according to official figures more than 50% of persons displaced due to mines and mining projects are tribals Another recent survey reported by organizations working among Adivasis shows that 79% of the persons displaced from the state of Andhra Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Odisha and Jharkhand are tribals. Huge tracts of their lands have also gone under the waters of hundreds of dams that have been built in independent India. In the northeast their lands remain highly militarized. India has 101 national parks covering 40,564 square kilometer and 543 wildlife sanctuaries covering 1,19,777 square kilometer. These are areas where tribals originally lived but were evicted from when they continue to stay in these forests. they are termed the encroachers losing their lands and access to the forest means that tribals lose their main sources of livelihood and food having gradually lost access to their traditional homelands many adivasis have migrated to cities in search of work where they are employed for very low wages in local industries or at building or construction sites they thus get caught in a cycle of poverty and deprivation 45% of tribal groups in rural areas and 35% in urban areas live below the poverty line this leads to deprivation in other areas many tribal children are malnourished literacy rates among tribals are also very low 
when adivasis are displaced from their lands they lose much more than a source of income they lose their traditions and customs a way of living and being they took our farming land they left some houses they took the cremation crown temple well and pond how will we survive says govinda maran who was displaced due to a refinery project in odisha as you have read there exists an interconnectedness between the economic and social dimensions of tribal life destruction in one sphere naturally impacts the other often this process of disposition and displacement can be painful and violent minorities and marginalization in unit 1 you read that the constitution provides safeguards to religious and linguistic minorities as part of our fundamental rights why do you think these minorities group have been provided these safeguards The term minority is most commonly used to refer to communities that are numerically small in relation to the rest of the population. However, it is a concept that goes well beyond numbers. It encompasses issues of power, access to resources, and has social and cultural dimensions. As you read in Unit One, the Indian Constitution recognized that the culture of the majority influences the way in which society and government might express themselves. In such cases. size can be a disadvantage and lead to the marginalization of the relatively smaller communities the safeguards are needed to protect minority communities against the possibility of being culturally dominated by the majority they also protect them against any discrimination and disadvantages that they may face given certain conditions communities that are small in numbers relative to the rest of society may feel insecure about their lives assets and well-being this sense of insecurity may get accentuated if the relation between the minority and majority communities are fraught the constitution provides these safeguards because it is committed to protecting india's cultural diversity and promoting equality as well as justice As you have already read in chapter 5 the judiciary plays a crucial role in upholding the law and enforcing fundamental rights every citizen of india can approach the courts if they believe that their fundamental rights have been violated now let us understand marginalization in the context of the muslim community muslims and marginalization According to 2011 census muslims are 14.2% of india's population and are considered to be a marginalized community in india today because in comparison to other communities they have over the years been deprived of the benefits of socio economic development the data in the three table below is deprived from different sources indicate the situation of the muslim community with regard to basic amenities literacy and public employment read the tables below what do you think these tables tell us about the socio economic status of the muslim community recognizing that muslims in india were lagging behind in term of various development indicators the government set up a high level committee in 2005 chaired by justice rajinder sachar the committee examined the social economic and educational status of the muslim community in india the report discusses in detail the marginalization of this community it suggests that on a range of social economic and educational indicators the situation of the muslim community is comparable to that of other marginalized communities like scheduled caste and scheduled tribes for example according to the report the average years of schooling for muslim children between the age of 7 to 16 is much lower than that of other socio religious communities economic and social marginalization experienced by muslim has other dimensions as well like other minorities muslim customs and practices are sometimes quite distinct from what is seen as the mainstream some not all muslims may wear a burqa sport a long beard wear a fez and this becomes way to identify all muslims because of this they tend to be identified differently and some people think they are not like the rest of us often this becomes an excuse to treat them unfairly and discriminate against them do you remember reading in your class 7th book about how the ansaris were finding it difficult to rent a house 
the social marginalization of Muslim in some instances has led to them migrating from places where they have lived often leading to the ghettoization of the community. Sometimes this prejudice leads to hatred and violence. In the above section of this chapter, we saw how in the case of Muslim community, there is a link between economic and social marginalization. Earlier in this chapter, you read about the situation of Adivasis in your class 7th book. You read about the unequal status of women in India. The experiences of all these groups point to the fact that marginalization is a complex phenomenon requiring a variety of strategies, measures and safeguards to address this situation. All of us have a stake in protecting the rights defined in the constitution and the laws and policies framed to realize these rights. Without this, we will never be able to protect the diversity that makes our country unique nor realize the state's commitment to promote equality for all. Conclusion In this chapter, we have tried to understand what it means to be a marginalized community. We have tried to look at this through the experiences of different marginalized communities. There are different reasons for each of these communities being marginalized. Each experiences marginalization in different ways. We have also seen the marginalization is linked to experiencing disadvantage, prejudice and powerlessness. In India, there are several more marginalized communities like the needs of whom you will read more in the next chapter. Marginalization results in having a low social status and not having equal access to education and other resources. And the lives of marginalized people can and do change. Thus, no one is marginalized all the time in exactly the same way. If we go back to the two examples of marginalized we have discussed, we will see that each of these groups has a long history of struggle and resistance. Marginalized communities want to maintain their cultural distinctiveness while having access to rights, development and other opportunities. In the next chapter, we will read about how different groups have confronted marginalization.